Okay, hello viewers. Uh, something slightly different today. We're going to be looking at the Suron brake caliper issue. It's a fairly well-known issue in Suron groups now. This is the standard Suron brake caliper. This is where the uh, fluid pipe goes in and the bleed screw. Pads spring-loaded. As you can see, this is a used one. Uh, I've had this one replaced under warranty. What happens is after a few miles they go spongy uh, and no matter how much you bleed it with the specialist bleed kit you can still not get any pressure back into the system. The only way to operate the brake is to keep pumping it which is obviously uh, frustrating and also slightly dangerous. So uh, I have my suspicions about what the issue may or may not be with these calipers. Uh, rumour has it there is a redesigned one now. They've redesigned the caliper, they've changed it on the later Surons. Uh, however, my new caliper's been in about five or six weeks now and that has also gone spongy or is going spongy. Not good. So what I did this morning was uh, of the caliper that's fitted to the bike, I took the existing brake pads out and I replaced them with a brand new set. I bought uh, two sets for more for uh, a couple of weeks ago. So the first thing I want to do is just compare the size of the worn brake pads. You can see they appear to have quite a bit of meat on them with the size of the new ones. So let's just cut this cable tie that holds them together. So they come with the spring link between them just pushes them apart keeps them from rubbing on the disc and you'll see initially if I compare like for like there's not a fantastic amount of difference yes they are worn but they're nowhere near the backing plate you would still say looking at those pads there was plenty of meat still on them in actual fact if you put like for like there's not much difference but let's get technical got a vernier caliper here uh, let's just turn it on and zero it. So, the nice shiny black ones are the new ones. So, this one, taking out the rear brake, is 3.84 millimetres. And the other one is 3.9. So, not a lot of difference, nearly 4 millimetres on those two. The new ones. 4.05 and the other one 4.1 so I would say 0.2 of a millimetre is not a lot of wear however this morning I replaced these pads with a new set and the sponginess has gone from the rear brake caliper it's, it's perfectly fine now, there's no pump in it, it works fine. Just from changing from these old pads to these new pads, which are basically 0.25 a millimetre less than the existing ones. So let's crack on, uh, put these to one side, uh, and then we'll uh, start taking this caliper apart. Obviously we need to remove the... Uh, pin that holds the pads in. Oh, it's okay, it's just down on the floor, I know where that is. This screw just unscrews. Like so. And then the calipers will just push out. It doesn't matter which way you push them, whether you push them up or down. These are obviously quite muddy. So one out. Just the mud holding this one in, I think. Pin out. Second one out. And let's just do a comparison of these ones which were replaced with the previous caliper and see how thick they are. 3.79 3.62 so fairly evenly worn but still 
must be a millimetre or so of pad left on the on the disc on the pads a millimetre of friction material left I would expect these to wear virtually to the backing plate before they needed replacing so let's put those out of the way here's the caliper the Suron caliper uh, I'm just going to gently put it in the vise just so I can undo it I know these bolts are quite tight so I'm not actually clamping it in the vise I'm just holding it there and they are quite tight these are the screws that hold the two half of the calipers together Oops. again you've got to be really careful with these they're just a star tight allen bolt Yeah, just undo the, the caliper itself I can see is actually coming apart I'll keep it in the cloth for a minute well, we've loosened it a fair bit you can see that it's actually starting to come apart itself yeah so let's just uh, spin the vice round just gives us a bit more working room on here without it getting in the way Okay, so here's the caliper, two halves, rear screw, front or top screw, they come apart. So here's the caliper in its entirety. You can see they have four pistons one two three four you can also see that here there is a small o-ring joint which passes to the other side of the caliper so so this side is where the fluid comes in from the brake pipe fills that caliper comes through this little hole here into the other side and then fills this one and this side is the one with the uh, bleed nipple in it. Uh, one might suspect looking at that but at having the bleed nipple right next to where the fluid comes in rather than at the other end may be one of the reasons why it's so hard to bleed. But there's no obvious leaks around here. There's no obvious signs of wear there at all. So what I'm going to do now is actually try and take out uh, the pistons and see if we can see any issue in there. One of the issues I'm suspecting is the fact that uh, these pistons may only have a very limited travel but I would be surprised if it was 0.25 of a millimetre now you can see there when I press that down, you see the fluid coming out? So the fluid's coming out, same with that one. If I press them right back, so they come right back. Now again, we've got to be careful with these. I may well uh, charge the airline and try and put some air pressure in here to try and blow these back out. What I don't want to do is unnecessarily damage them. Uh, they could still be a spare. So if I can find a knife in here we will try to just gently lever these out. Nope. Well, 
will turn whether I can get enough purchase on that to pull it out or not remains to be seen it's coming so here you can see the they are there is the caliper the piston sorry so you can see it's a small plastic piston uh, it has an o-ring on the inside to seal it so I'm just dripping brake clearing everywhere uh, from my point of view the design of that means that that would come out significantly I can feel the o-ring purchasing there so if we were to measure that, so let me get a cloth and want to break fluid off my fingers. Uh, if we were to measure that, how much that piston comes out. It is 3.7 millimetres. So that's probably about 3.5 millimetres maximum for this piston to come out without it starting to leak so that would give you all the brake pad material and back so I was wondering if these were limited if these little pistons were stepped but they're not stepped at all as you can see they're perfectly round so they ought to be able to come out reasonably far and then again they will just push back in but certainly I can feel feel that so my theory about the piston being stepped or only having a very limited travel isn't valid. Uh, it would appear to have a reasonable amount of travel. So I, I still maintain that the bleed nipple is in the wrong place. The bleed nipple should be at the other end, so it draws the caliper right through the brake, uh, through the draws the fluid through the caliper right to the other end. Uh, but why changing the brake pads should make that much difference I don't know one, one, one might wonder is it a fluid issue i.e. is there enough fluid in the calipers when they start to extend however if that was the case if it was using more fluid it would run out of fluid at the handlebar reservoir and clearly that does not happen there's plenty of fluid in it but it just doesn't seem to operate uh, anymore so I'm wondering if the issue is to do with the handlebar reservoir not being able to pump enough fluid down to the actual caliper and you can see the passageway at the back here that links the two pistons together so I'm not going to go any further with that uh, not exactly the most exciting video but there you have it a Suron caliper I'm going to go out today with the new brake pads in and see just uh, what difference that makes thanks for watching sorry I couldn't be more uh, conclusive on that video